are so appreciative of your word and we're so appreciative of the knowledge of geography that you have made available to us that will help us to interpret your word and to give us clear understanding and meaning of all that applies to your word. We thank you, Lord, that we can come together as a group and learn together, for we learn better as a group as we do individually. Now, Lord, just touch our hearts, our minds, our understanding, and we'll give you praise in your name and say, Amen. Amen. All right. Last week, we finished with um, all of the empires that, that, uh, that I touched on. Needless to say, I, um, there were other smaller empires that we did not uh, touch on, and uh, uh, if they were mentioned in the Bible, it was just maybe one, one passage or something of that nature. <coughs> but the major ones we, uh, we have uh, uh, touched on. Now, uh, tonight I want to start with uh, the uh, subject of the uh, Palestinian physical geography. We're going to talk about the quote-unquote holy lands. Uh, uh, now, uh, we, have, we have set the stage to get to this point, and there was a lot to set before we could get to this point, because um, uh, the um, holy lands, the land of uh, Palestine, um, Canaan, uh, Israel, uh, they, uh, that land is a uh, meeting point of three major continents. It's the meeting points of major uh, trade routes. It's the meeting point of uh, major uh, war machines, and the list goes on. And so uh, we, we, we saw that as we talked about the various empires and uh, uh, talking about the various uh, peoples and nations that, uh, that, that uh, are related to God's Word. Now we want to talk about the land of uh, Palestine itself. Now, uh, to begin with, uh, we're going to talk about the neighbors of, uh, of Palestine, well actually the neighbors of Israel, um, and uh, there are seven major nations that surround uh, the land of Israel. And we've talked about a couple of, uh, of these uh, before, but if you will um, take note, now there are actually two maps on the, um, on the screen here. It's divided right, right down the middle. And um, I put both, both of those up because I couldn't find a map that had all of the, of the uh, uh, neighbors of Israel and I wanted to uh, make sure that you understood where they happened to be. The first one that I uh, want to talk about is uh, Phoenicia. Uh, we have already discussed this uh, uh, country and uh, notice the coral colored in this first um, uh, map here uh, and in the second map it's more of a brown color right up at the, up at the top. Um, this, remember, we talked about the fact that this uh, country was not interested in expanding by uh, conquest uh, of uh, military uh, matters. They expanded their empire through, uh, through trade, through commerce, and um, they became a uh, world power um, uh, at this time because of that trade. But that empire started right here as a neighbor of uh, the pa uh, Palestinian uh, lands, or it's actually a part of the Palestinian lands. Another name for this um, country uh, uh, is uh, Lebanon. And uh, it was that big? Do, I'm sorry. Lebanon was that big? Wow. Yeah, yeah, it, it's it's large. Yeah, uh, and. Uh, Lebanon is a very mountainous country, and you're going to find that all of this uh, land uh, either is uh, desert or it's uh, mountainous or there are foothills. And um, it's a very unique uh, ecosystem um, that we are going to look at. But up in the northwest uh, corner uh, of the Levant, 
um, we take note that the western border um, of that uh, land is uh, the Mediterranean Sea. Uh, we note that um, to the uh, northwest corner of the Bible lands is occupied by this land that is known as Phoenicia or what we call Lebanon. Now, some people uh, did not realize that uh, the uh, name Lebanon um, was mentioned as early as it is in the Bible. But if you will remember, uh, David and uh, Solomon uh, particularly uh, began to uh, uh, negotiate with uh, the king of Lebanon for their, their lumber, for the, uh, particularly the cedars of Lebanon. And so be aware of that. Uh, Lebanon has been both an enemy and a friend of, uh, of Israel. So um, the next area, then we're going to go eastward now. We're going to go all the way down the east, uh, east side now. Uh, the next area we want to talk about is the uh, land of Syria. And Syria um, is that, uh, uh, if you look at that, can you see the blue? It says Kingdom of uh, Aram, uh, Damascus. Um, that's the land of Syria. It was the forerunner of the Assyrian Empire. And after the Assyrians were uh, conquered by uh, the Babylonians, um, the Syrian bloc uh, here so, uh, sort of broke away and uh, the Babylonians allowed them to do that as long as they recognized that um, Babylon was the uh, main uh, political power uh, of the area and they paid their tribute. The big thing was paying their tribute. And you, uh, we, we see that uh, as well. Now, uh, underneath uh, Syria, you see a mustard-colored area. And this is um, the country of Aram. Now, this is important in the fact that if you remember that Abraham came through the uh, Mesopotamia area and came down, made, made, made a turn southward, and this is um, where that, that he wound up for a while. Um, do you remember uh, a, uh, Abraham went to a place called Padan uh, Haran? Yeah, got it. Yeah. Um, this was where his brother settled. And this is where that uh, Tira, uh, his father, had, uh, and Lot, uh, his nephew, uh, Lot was the son of uh, Nahor. Um, and if you uh, note, uh, even though God had spoken to Abraham, it was an unbreakable custom that the patriarch of the family had the final say of whatever was done. Mm. Yeah, all right. And so Abraham was not the patriarch of the family. His father was. And Abraham, even though God had spoken to Abram about uh, uh, move, uh, moving, uh, and uh, Abram agreed to that, uh, before he could uh, make that journey, he had to convince his father that uh, that they could go. And so his father, Tira, decided, well, he was going to go with him. And then uh, 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 Abraham's nephew, Lot, uh, decided to go as well. And so they come up the uh, uh, Euphrates River uh, in, the, in Mesopotamia, and then down to this area uh, here that we call uh, Aram. Now, Abraham didn't go any further into Canaan until his father died. And when his father died, then Abram moved on down further into the land of Canaan. 
which is also known as Palestine. And we'll talk about that in just a moment. So be aware that um, uh, Aram um, has following the southern flow of the Jordan River and occupies the land east of Israel is the kingdom of Aram. And it was first settled um, by Iranians, uh, the son of Shem. Okay? It was first settled by the son of Shem and grandson of Noah. And the grandson uh, of Noah. Um, Abram's family lived in Aram and sent, and, and once um, Abram went on down into Canaan, and God gave him a son by the name of Isaac. It was the custom that family members married within family members. Did that make sense at all? And, you know, we talked about um, where did different ways in the Bible, where did their wives come from? Well, they came from family members. And back then, uh, th there was not a large population of people. And so uh, uh, the custom was that um, uh, nephews would marry cousins and that, that type of thing. Um, we even take note that Abram, uh, his wife, was his half-sister. Mm -hmm. you know. um, and then moving away from uh, uh Abram and, and that, that line, if you go down to Egypt, you find where brothers and sisters married one another. And this is the reason why that um, so many of the uh, Egyptian uh, kings were very effeminate. Okay, uh, I, I don't know if that's a good word to use, but anyway, they, they, were, they were more uh, weakly. Uh, they were not aggressive. Now, that's not to say that all of them were, were that way. But uh, uh, we do uh, see that uh, materializing uh, over and over. And that is the reason why that ever so often there was a new dynasty that came to power. Because the old dynasty, they... Uh, were not as strong as what they had been before, and so another uh, uh, line uh, of the of the royalty moved in and took took their place. Okay, now, uh, so we we've talked about uh, uh, the Iranians. Um, I didn't mean Iranians, Iran Iranians. Yeah, there we go. It starts with an M. Okay, now, when Abraham wanted a son, uh, uh, wanted a wife for his son, he sent his servant back to the, the home site here in uh, uh, Aram. And you will notice that God had his hand on that uh, situation, that when the servant prayed and asked God to uh, send um, uh, the, the one that, that he was to uh, take back to his uh, master, uh, Rebecca shows up. And, uh, Re of course, Rebecca is the uh, daughter um, of uh, Abraham's um, uh, son, uh, 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 brother. And so Rebecca was given a choice. Stay there in her homeland until she was more mature, or to leave with the servant at once. She chose to leave with the servant at once. She wanted to get to where Abraham was. Now we find that um, Rebecca is the mother of twins, um, Esau and uh, Jacob. She is the mother of two nations in the Palestinian area. She was the mother of Israel. Of course, you know, Jacob's name was changed to Israel. But she was also the mother of Esau, who founded uh, the Edomite uh, kingdom, and we're going to deal with them in just, just a moment. Now, let's move down a little bit further uh, southward here. Um, move, let's uh, move down into the 
um, that mustardy colored and the purple uh, colored there. We have two nations that were founded by two brothers. But we take note that Ammon and Moab were founded by Lot's uh, by, by uh, Lot uh, offspring through an incestuous relationship with his own daughters. Because remember that the angel of the Lord came to Abraham and, and let it be known that he was going to go to Sodom and destroy Sodom and, and Lot pleaded uh, with uh, the angel to uh, deliver uh, uh, or to spare the, the uh, city if uh, they had 50 and 40 and right on down. But there was not that many, even just 10 righteous individuals. And so the angel did agree to let Lot and his family leave. But take note, in the book of Genesis, you find where that Lot's uh, children refused to leave. And so Lot, his uh, wife and his two daughters that were still at home they left the city notice something though the angel said we have to hurry because we cannot destroy the city until you are you have left the city and you are safe and so um, uh, people need to to understand that when God's wrath falls, just like he did with uh, here with, with Lot um, and he uh, did with Noah, that even though all around them was sin, they, had, they, they waited until um, uh, those that were going to escape were ready, uh, had gotten out of the way. God has done that time after time after time throughout history. Now, um, we see that uh, Ammon and Moab um, were both uh, uh, founded uh, nations. Um, and these two nations, they had a love-hate relationship with Israel as well. Ammon was the most violent of the two nations. Moab is, uh, is, is very interesting to talk about Moab because King David's great-grandmother came from Moab. Ruth. Uh, well, yeah, Ruth, uh, great-grandmother Ruth, yeah. And, uh, and so, um, you know, in the wedding, uh, ceremony uh, many uh, many ceremonies use that phrase um, in Ruth uh, where Ruth is saying to uh, Naomi where thou goest I will go and, and so forth well uh, many people don't realize that, that it was a, um, a daughter-in-law talking to her mother-in-law not a uh, wife to a, a bride to a, to a, a, a bridegroom but anyway the whole, but the whole plan was there so um, Ruth was the great grandmother of King David. Now, we mentioned Edom. And uh, so Edom was the twin of Jacob. Now, notice um, the, again, it's a, a yellow color down there underneath, underneath this. Edom was a, uh, was a relatively arid area. Was was red, red, uh, uh, it was dry. Uh, it was uh, part of, uh, of the the desert uh, chain. There, um, we see that uh, this is the southern boundary of uh, uh, Palestine, the southern nation of Palestine. Well, I guess you could say this was the uh, south east corner. And then the southwest corner uh, is another nation that we've already talked about as well. Let's see. Uh, um, now, we take note that um, uh, the Jordan River flows right down through 
uh, where these nations join to meet with, with Israel, to meet with Palestine. And um, that Jordan River has its root system, and we'll, we're going to talk about that later on um, uh, in, uh, in, in this lesson, starts at a little lake that's about eight square miles in, in, in area, way up in what is called uh, Upper Galilee. It's up close to the Lebanon border. And from that source, the uh, Jordan River uh, headwaters is formed. And we see that it fl the water flows down from uh, uh, Lake Hula down into uh, the Sea of Galilee. And we'll, we'll talk about the other names and everything later. And then as it flows in, to, uh, from the uh, north into uh, the Sea of Galilee. It also flows out in the southern part that goes on down and empties into um, the Dead Sea. Now, do you, can you see the blue there? Um, it's uh, right there next to, the, to uh, the kingdom of Moab, the, the purple there. That is the Dead Sea. Uh, and if you go up a little bit higher, you can see uh, the Sea of Galilee, and you go up a little bit higher above that, and you see Lake Hula there. Um, now, let's see. Uh, this um, uh, land of Edom was a, a desert kingdom, um, and we take note that Rebekah favored Jacob, whereas Isaac favored Jacob. Did I get that right? No, Esau. You favored Esau. Okay. Um, Rebecca favored uh, Jacob and Isaac favored Esau. Okay, got it. Um, this is a, a great example of what happens when you pit one, yes. bro, uh, one sibling against the other sibling. It always winds up in disaster. Yeah. And um, so when uh, Rebecca uh, connived and uh, mm -hmm. made it possible for um, Isaac to bless uh, Jacob with the birthright, and, and we don't have time to talk about the birthright, but the birthright was extremely important. Mm -hmm. um, every child was given a portion of the uh, the patriarch's uh, holdings whenever the patriarch died. But the one who was given the birthright was designated as the heir was given twice as much. And along with that, the uh, that individual became the priest slash king of that family. Became the... Um, uh, one who made all of the decisions of, of where the, uh, and remember at this time, uh, uh, many of the uh, people were still nomadic and they moved from place to place to place and it was the one who held the birthright, the one who was the patriarch, he was the one that was um, uh, given the authority to say, we're going here or we're going there or what have you. Now, also, it's important that not only does a clan or a tribe have a uh, patriarch, but they also have a matriarch. Mm -hmm. And in uh, this case um, here, the matriarch um, with Abraham uh, was his wife, Sarah, or Sarai. And um, uh, that matriarch welded great authority great authority um, in the way that uh, genealogy is kept in the Bible the gene genealogical line flows through the mother and therefore the patriarch has uh, more power than male members of that family. The only one that has more power is the patriarch himself. All right. 
Let's see. Um, now, we talked about um, Edom over in the southeast corner. Now, over on the coast in the southwest uh, corner is the country of um, the Philistine, uh, Philistia. Uh, it's um, right along, uh, it's not a very large uh, piece of land. It's only about 25 to 30 miles uh, long and only about 15 miles uh, wide at its widest uh, point. But they were a very militant people. And they were not Semitic. When we use the word Semitic, we are talking about people that, um, uh, such as the Jews, such as um, uh, the, the uh, uh, Bomanites, the Amorites, uh, and so forth. Those were all Semitic because they had a common uh, lineage. Uh, the uh, Philistines, they are thought to have come from the islands in the uh, in the mis in the uh, The Great Sea, the Mediterranean. I'll get it out in a minute. You know, you know, and um, they invaded th this land uh, and set up a very strong, small kingdom. But that kingdom was based upon five cities. Based upon five cities. Say this uh, uh, part of the uh, kingdom uh, was right at the border where the uh, Negrev uh, Desert uh, comes into play. Uh, right at the bottom there, I, uh, I don't know if you can see it from there, um, you have uh, the Negrev uh, Desert. Over on the other side, you, uh, uh, ha uh, on that map, you have that uh, there. Okay, now, Oh, those, by the way, those five uh, uh, city-states uh, were are called uh, Ashdod, Escalon, Ekron, Gath, and G uh, Gaza. And as I pointed out, they were very, very warlike. Now, those were the countries around Palestine, around Israel, around, uh, around Canaan there. Now, let's turn our attention to the land of Palestine itself. The land of Palestine itself. We take note that the name Canaan was used in the Old Testament to describe the land between the Mediterranean Sea and the Jordan River. Um, it was bound on the north by uh, the Lebanon Mountains and in the south by the Negev uh, uh, Desert. Um, the land uh, that came to be occupied by the Israelites uh, became uh, uh, known as Palestine. And later, Israel um, uh, uh, retained that name until the period of the divided kingdoms. And then we see that uh, there were uh, two major um, divisions uh, of the kingdom uh, there. Um, one became the ten tribes of Israel, and the other became the land of Judah. Palestine simply means, in its literal meaning, Philistine land. Philistine land. Now, Philistine not only uh, included uh, Canaan, but it also included Gilead. Included Gilead. Uh, I get talking, I forget to move. move. Okay, here is a, a, a topographical map of, of the land of Palestine. Now, not, Philist, uh, not Philistia, but uh, Palestine. Okay? Um, you can see the Great Rift Valley coming right down through the center of the land. And uh, you can see the mountains uh, on both sides of that rift. And the uh, plains uh, along the coastline are the only uh, flat lands that basically that we have there on, on the uh, west side. On the east side, there is some more of the flat lands over there. 
Um, so we take note that um, not only is Palestine um, including uh, the land of uh, Canaan, but also Gilead, and um, we take note that the northern boundary of this land is uh, a river that is right up at, uh, at the top up there. You can ju ju just north of uh, Tyre um, there. And it is called, the uh, river is called Le, uh, Le, Le Antis, the uh, Elantes uh, River. Um, it is spelled L-E-O-N-T-E-S, but phonetically it is uh, spelled um, L-E-E dash A-A-N dash T-E-E-Z. So um, this is one of the major rivers in the land, in the land of Palestine. Um, we take note that it uh, is just north of the city of Tyre. Okay. Uh, can can you see where Tyre is? And, and you can see the see the um, river uh, that flows ju just north um, there. Now we take note that uh, Mount uh, Lebanon and Mount uh, Haran is also uh, in um, this area as well. Um, if you go about halfway over. You can see Mount Herod uh, there, and then Mount uh, uh, Lebanon is way up at the top, and you can't really see it uh, that well uh, on, on that on that map. Now, we have seen a flat presentation of this this land, but we also have for you uh, a geographical, I mean, a topographical uh, area. Uh, as well. So I wanted to make sure that you could see not only how it looked as a flat map, but also show you the 3D uh, version as well. Uh, Palestine's eastern border is the uh, uh, Syrian and the Arabian Desert. This is the Syrian and the Arabian Desert. Now, Palestine's uh, southern border um, is the Wadi, W-A-D-I. Anyone familiar with, with that term, Wadi? It just simply means a stream. But in Palestine, the streams tend to dry up, particularly in the uh, summer months. And so you'll have, um, out in Arizona and out, out in that area, um, you have streams that dry up and, and they just... Uh, uh, call them a, a, a dry bed and um, so that that's what it is but when the rains come get out of the way because they, it's a raging river that flows through uh, the wadi now the southern boundary is a uh, wadi uh, entitled El Arish capital uh, uh, lower E L dash Arish, capital A-R-I-S-H, and also the town of Gaza. Now, in conjunction with the um, Wadi El Arish, uh, the Negrev Desert continues uh, southward uh, to complete the ancient Palestinian border. So you have uh, a Wadi, you have de uh, uh, desert, and the actual southern border and then southeast you have desert on that side uh, as well. Now, um, the city of Gaza, where does it belong? Does anybody remember? In the, in the past? Hmm? In the past or now? Uh, on the map. Oh. What, what, what part of the, uh, of the uh, Palestinian area? It is not actually a part of Palestine, but it is part of the um, Philistines, yeah. Philistia. And it was a major um, Philistine uh, city, one of the five 
uh, major Philistine cities. Okay. Uh, now we pointed out that uh, uh, Gaza is referred to uh, as a Philistine town as well as a 31 mile by 4 mile strip. 4 mile. You know, that's like from here to Mansfield Road. That's not very... 35 uh, thir uh, 31 miles. What is that? Uh, that would be like where you live, isn't it, Kim? Out in home? 31 miles is yeah. like where you live? Okay. Over to where you live, but only four miles wide. Wow. Wasn't a big uh, strip there, but it formed a buffer. And we're going to talk about this uh, uh, buffer um, when we get to the... Um, uh, to the Exodus, and you know, okay, um, okay, we covered. I covered all that. I covered all that, and I covered all that. Oh, I'm doing good. <laughs> uh, now, oh, um, the uh, Wadi uh, El Arish goes by another name. And, and that you'll find, and it is uh, the river of Egypt. Do not confuse this with the Nile River. It is um, the Wadi El Rish. It, it is uh, uh, flowing um, over into the Mediterranean uh, Sea, but not over in Egypt itself. It forms the boundary between uh, Palestine and Egypt itself, and not very far from. From this uh, uh, landmark um, is the Sinai Peninsula. Okay, um, all right. We take note that um, uh, this uh, reference to uh, the uh, brook of Egypt is found in uh, Numbers 34, verse 5 in the King James Version, or the New King James Version. Um, the Hebrew word for brook is Nahal, N-A-H-A-L. And it denotes a stream flowing rapidly in winter or in the rainy season, but in the summer, it's a dry, uh, summer, it's a dry bed. Mm. Okay. Now let's move to the next. Okay. Did I, I cover that? Information, didn't I? Mm -hmm. Okay. All right, now. Um, oh, um, I left out the western uh, border of Palestine, uh, and it's the uh, Mediterranean Sea, or the Great Sea as well. Now, let's move in, inland, okay? We've, we've dealt with around the areas uh, a bit. Um, so we're moving inland now. Palestine's natural divisions. There are uh, four major natural divisions uh, for the land of um, Palestine. And uh, we, we'll show you um, the maps and so forth uh, that are there. Let's see. Um, oh, I know what I did. Uh, these uh, topographical uh, maps here, th this is showing the um, highs and lows of, of the, uh, the, the whole land of, uh, of Palestine, but we broke it up into four sections, going across this way instead of up and down this way. Okay. Okay, there's the other, okay, there's the other, Mediterranean Sea. All right, now we um, are uh, coming into the um, uh, natural divisions. The first natural division is the coastal plains area. You see where the Mediterranean Sea is located? That first strip of land there, that is the plains area. That is what, uh, what we call the plains area, uh, the coastal plains area. And there are five different coastal plains that are located along that strip of land there. Uh, they uh, are the 
plains of Acre and Asher up in the north, way up at the top. And all that. Um, uh, do you see Tyre up there? Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay. Uh, just below Tyre is the uh, area that is called um, the uh, plain of Asher uh, and Acre. Um, it is also uh, called, and I, 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 I want to pronounce it uh, a cocoa, but uh, I may not have it exactly right. It's spelled A C C O, and all. And so uh, the other word for for a cocoa there is uh, Asher. I, I'm sorry, uh, Acre. Now, I mentioned uh, Asher. What was Asher? Stop and think through the lands that were divided up among the children of Israel. How was it? It was one of the tribes. One there of it is. One, 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 one of the tribes, one of, uh, of uh, Jacob's uh, 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 descendants. Okay, and they had the land way up uh, uh, to the north there, right along the coast. Um, so uh, take, take note mm -hmm. of that. Coming down, you notice the little uh, uh, yeah. peninsula, yeah. the uh, little pimple looking thing yeah. <laughs> sticking up there? Okay, uh, just below that and, and including that is the plain of Dor, D-O-R. Not D-O-O-R, but D-O-R, Dor. And then below that is the plains of uh, Sharon. Uh, uh, that is probably uh, a, 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 an area that is more familiar to people um, uh, as they have read and studied uh, God's Word. And uh, then, right down at the bottom, uh, the uh, uh, nation that uh, it forms the north, uh, excuse me, the south um, uh, west border of, uh, of Palestine. It is the plains of Philistine, plains of Philistia. Okay, now, those are the uh, plains that are right up against the coast. Mm -hmm. Now, go back up to it, and you see that, that little uh, Peninsula. little pointed part there. Yeah. Okay, yeah. got Two important places there. You have Mount Carmel. Remember Mount Carmel? Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, remember uh, uh, the prophet uh, killed all the uh, uh, prophets of Baal? Mm -hmm. and, uh, and so forth. All right. And then if you look to the east of that uh, area of Mount Carmel, you have what is called the Valley of Jezreel. The Valley of Jezreel. And uh, it is actually known as the Plain of Escalon. Escalon, yeah. Okay. Let me spell it for you so you'll have, uh, get it right. E-S-D-R-A-E-L-O-N. Scroll on. Okay. Notice that the coastal plains vary in width. They vary uh, in width. And the chief division of the coastal plains, I just uh, went over those uh, with you. And um, I'm not going to go over all those with you again. Uh, I will um, point out that the plains of Escarlon, or the Valley of Jezreel, they, there are two major features here that are, that are important. One is Megiddo. Okay, the uh, Mount, the Mount uh, of Megiddo. And uh, here, this place is identified in eschatology. And this has to do with the coming of the Lord at his second advent. Not in the rapture, but in his second uh, advent. So uh, take, take note of that. Um, now, uh, Megiddo 
if you go to Israel today, I don't know if uh, Sister Patsy saw this or not in her tour of Israel, but Megiddo is actually a tell, T-E-L. It's actually a uh, tell. And uh, it's a very important uh, pl uh, place in history because it signifies where that this area settlement on top of settlement, on top of settlement, on top of settlement occurs. And it is a archaeologist dream world mm -hmm. to uh, be able to work uh, with a with a tail. Uh, it is a mound or a small uh, hill upon which these civilizations have uh, built. Um, and so uh, Megiddo was a, 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 a tail. Um, sometimes um, uh, even little small hills are referred to as a, as a mount. And so, uh, so, uh, so people take note of, of that. Now, the second important feature here is the strip that is called the Chapelet. And, I, and you spell that S-H-E-P-H-E-L-A-H. S H E P H E L A H. Shefa, Shefalai might be better, but uh, uh, L A is pronounced lay. But I have I've heard it re referred to as as the Shefalai, as well. Now, this is a major geographical feature of Palestine. Um, and in the Old Testament, it is mentioned several times um, because of its strategic location. Because of its st very strategic location. The words uh, Shephelé means low or lowlands or foothills. So we have the um, flat plains right along the coast, and now in the Shephelé, the, the foothills began to rise. Um, have anybody been over to uh, Alabama? When you, if you go to, to northern Alabama, over where uh, our daughter lives, uh, Birmingham in that area, and as you go northward, you're in the foothills of the Rocky Mountains. You begin to climb the Rocky Mountains. Uh, I got it wrong. The Appalachian Mountains. The Appalachian Mountains. Uh, which is oldest? The Appalachian Mountains or the Rocky Mountains? Appalachians. The Appalachian Mountains are, uh, are the oldest uh, of, uh, of the two mountain ranges. Notice the United States has two major mountain ranges on either side, uh, uh, east and west, of, uh, of the, uh, the country. Okay, so here, the Shephelah means highland. And uh, we take note that it is also referred to as the Shephelah of Judah. And it is about a 12 to 15 mile wide uh, series of foothills, okay? 12 to 15 mile wide range of uh, series of foothills um, that lie between the coastal plains and the central range. Now, these foothills are located uh, inland close to the nation of uh, Philistia, also close to the plains of uh, uh, Philistia. Um, the Shephelah stretches between the cities of Gaza and Jaffa. Okay, let me back up here. Okay. Um, if you look at the map down toward the bo bottom, mm -hmm. uh, and can you see it along, uh, along the edge? It says coastal plains there. Mm -hmm. And then you come in a little ways going eastward. Mm -hmm. There you have the Shephelah uh, or the Shephelah uh, region. And then a little further over, you have the uh, western mountains. So uh, here we have, uh, in that area, is, is right there where the nation of uh, uh, 
Philistia is located. And uh, that another name for the nation of Philistia is the plains of Philistia. And so that, uh, that is where the uh, uh, Shephaliah uh, is lo uh, located. Now, uh, some people have asked, well, what is the importance of this region? Well, it's important as it lies between the coastal plains to the west and the Judean mountains uh, to the east. Um, the ancient world used this corridor, and this is what this is, uh, the Chaffelet is a corridor there. They used this uh, corridor um, for their trade route. It's, uh, uh, the, it's, it's a, a relatively flat area and it is not a struggling uh, process for their animals to uh, get their goods to uh, the market. Now, uh, they use this um, land beginning at Mount Carmel, flowing from Mount Carmel in the north down to Gazir uh, in the south. And as I pointed out, it was important uh, that uh, several valleys connected uh, the Shephali, um, forming corridors. And these formed routes that people can come in from the mountainous uh, areas, and it makes it easier to get to this corridor of land where that the trade uh, is, is taking place. And it makes it easier for them to get their trade goods um, either uh, going northward up toward uh, where the uh, Phoenicians are or going south toward, um, uh, toward Egypt. Okay, uh, the Israelites live primarily in the mountains. Many people don't realize that, but if you take note, the major cities of Israel are up in the mountains. Anybody want to give a guess why that they built their uh, cities up in the mountains? Easier to protect? Do what? Easier to protect me? It was easier for protection but a very specific reason. The, all of Israel's neighbors had chariots oh. with iron wheels right. and those chariots were not able to maneuver well up in the mountain er, uh, areas. And uh, remember, God had forbidden Israel to build chariots. Why? Yeah, and all. And uh, uh, he forbid them to build these chariots primarily because uh, if they began to um, build chariots, they began to put their trust in uh, the war machine of, of a chariot instead of putting their trust in God. God was the one that was going to fight for them. And, and at this time, uh, uh, Israel did not have a king. Okay, now, um, we also take note that uh, the Israelites' settlements were up in the mountains. And um, not only did they use this area as um, an area to transport their trade goods, <clears throat> but they were also pirates. <laughs> they would come out of the mountains and they would attack caravans that was coming down uh, the Shephalaya. And so uh, the coastal plains people and nations, um, they decided we're going to build some major cities all along the Shephalaya. And uh, we have uh, these cities built so that if the Israelites came out of the hills to uh, attack a, a caravan, then the cities would band together and go after uh, the Israelites and drive them back up in, into the uh, hills. Um, three of these uh, uh, large cities that were built was uh, Gezer and uh, uh, Ezekiel, A-Z-E-K-A-H, and uh, Lashish. L-A-C-H-I-S-T. And they guarded the trade routes. They guarded the trade routes. Now, we've talked about the coastal plains area. We've talked about the Shephali uh, uh, area or Shephali area. 
The next area is the central range or the hill country. The central range or the hill country. Let's see. No. Okay, we're going to stay there, there for a little while. Okay. Um, I can't see the map at the angle that I am here. But if you will notice, that right there in the center, you see it says um, the central range or the hill, or the hill country. Um, this area was most commonly associated with the Israelites. Remember I said that this was the area that um, uh, Israel built their city, major cities. Jer Jerusalem is built in the city, uh, built in the mountains. Uh, there for an example. Um, this area lies west to east between the Shephelah and the Jordan Valley, and north to south between Lebanon and the Negev uh, Desert. And one of the major cities of this region is uh, Hebron. And uh, Hebron is going to play a major role in the history of Israel. Uh, when the land is divided up, uh, Caleb, remember Caleb? He was uh, the other uh, spy that gave a good report. Uh, this was where he wanted uh, his land uh, to be given to him there. Um, there are three main divisions of the central range of the hill country. Um, they correspond to the mountains of Galilee, Samaria, and Judah. So let's look at Galilee. All right. Notice that, are you telling me I only have three minutes left? <laughs> I'm talking as fast as I can. Okay, let's get, let's get Galilee out of the way. Uh, notice uh, Galilee here. You have the upper Galilee and you have the lower Galilee. Um, we see in the upper uh, Galilee is uh, dominated by Mount Miron, also known as Jabal uh, Yarmuk, Y-A-R-M-U-K. Um, those were uh, two of the major uh, mountains in that, that area. Um, you have the mountains that average uh, a height of about 2,800 feet above sea level. And um, we take note that uh, Mount Maron uh, is the highest point in Israel. It's the highest point in Israel. Now, it is also important that, to know that there are rivers, or well, uh, let's call them streams, uh, wadis, up in this area that flows southward. And that's, that's going to be important in just a moment. Now, Lower Galilee is dominated by the fertile plains of Jezreel that we talked about earlier. It is also dominated very specifically by the Sea of Galilee. Now the Sea of Galilee has several different names. Um, it is referred to as the uh, Chinnereth um, Sea. It is referred to as uh, Genesaret. It is referred to as Tiberias. Um, uh, yeah, Tiberius, uh, Lake Tiberius, Lake Genesaret, and uh, the Center Sea. Uh, there are other names that uh, it, it has been called uh, as well. Now, um, the Sea of Galilee lies between these two subdivisions. Okay, lies between the upper and the lower area. Uh, Okay, I'll, 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 I'll cover the rest of that on, on another day there. Okay, so I'm going to stop there. The only thing I wanted to point out to you was that the Sea of Galilee and the um, uh, Hula Lake, they are a part of that uh, area that is the, um, uh, the Great Rift. And uh, what flows down through the middle of the Great Rift? The Jordan River. Okay, and so the Jordan River flows from Hula 
down to the Sea of Galilee, out of the Sea of Galilee, down to the Dead Sea. Okay, so we'll stop there and take up some more next week.